and welcome to Dice and Demons. My name is Emma and uh, today we will be doing a video tutorial on how I paint my orcs. So uh, recently I've been posting a lot of the photos of my orcs in various Facebook groups and I've been getting tons of requests for a tutorial. So I thought that the easiest way to do it was actually to make a video showing you exactly how I paint and what colors I use. So uh, that's what this video will be all about. As you can see from the YouTube channel history, this is my very first video. So I hope you'll excuse me if I make some sort of technical blunders or if the quality isn't as high as you might see from other YouTube channels. I hope you'll still find the video useful and I hope that uh, you'll like it and perhaps even subscribe because my plan is to do many more video tutorials like this one in the future. And I would also like to do other videos about the Warhammer hobby in general as well. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, I'll be talking about both uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar and 40k. I'll be talking about painting models, I'll be talking about building terrain, I'll be talking about new stuff coming out, uh, which is very exciting right now, seeing as we are in May 2020 and the 9th edition of 40k has just been announced. So these are very exciting times and I look forward to talking more about them here on this channel. So stay tuned and I hope you like the video and uh, any sort of comments I will uh, read and try to uh, respond to as well. Right, so, so what I've done is I have primed the entire thing with the Wraithbone spray and then I've used Athematic Blue, Viandum Yellow and Blood Angels Red to give it a sort of a base coat. And you can see the contrast paints they give it a sort of uneven splotchy look and that's because the contrast paints they don't really work that well on flat surfaces such as armor panels really. Uh, they are more intended for you being used on fur or scales or, or stuff like that. Uh, but I don't really care about it here because I'm going to be covering more or less the entire surface with a uh, diagonal cross uh, the diagonal cross hatching pattern anyway, so I don't really mind. So here I'm using another contrast paint. I'm using the Pterodon Turquoise and I'm using that to um, to do all the edges. So here I'm doing a, an, an edge highlight on the Athematic Blue with Pterodon Turquoise. And you'll see that often when you do edge highlighting you are going to want to be very precise and use uh, just the edge of your brush and here I'm using the tip of the brush and that's because I'm going to do another edge highlight after this one. So I don't want this to be too thin. And um, and you can see I'm going across all the edges to make sure it's all covered. And once I've done that I'm doing these small, small, um, almost like cross, cross hatching with my uh, brush. So you can see just going diagonally uh, both ways so that I'm going to be covering the bottom part of the panel. Um, so it gives it a sort of look like it's in a shade even though I'm, I'm not going and I'm not doing the full uh, non-metallic metal uh, look here. I'm going for a very stylized, cartoonish look anyway. Uh, but still, when I'm doing the um, cross-hatching with the darker colors, I tend to do it on the bottom uh, half, on the lower half of the uh, armor panels, just because that's where you would have less light. I imagine always the light coming from above. So here I'm doing the uh, yellow panel, and I'm uh, doing the darker contrast paints with the... Um, with the a Griffhound Orange and again you can see I'm doing a very wide sort of edge highlight here and I'm also doing the small cross hatches as well and um, again trying to get them mostly on the lower half of the uh, panels and this looks like it, it needs a very steady hand uh, otherwise you're going to mess it up but to, truth be told, even if you do mess it up, it's not the end of the world. If you get a big splotch of orange at, the, uh, at one of the panels, say, you can just, you know, you can just uh, go back with some uh, wraith bone and do a bit of cross hatching with that as well, and then a bit of more of the yandon yellow, and it's no big problem. So now I'm going to do the lighter edge highlight on the yellow, and I'm using a game color moon yellow, but you could use. Uh, any sort of yellow you want. Uh, I just put it in an old uh, uh, Citadel paint pot, so that's why it doesn't look like the game color. But it is actually game color moon yellow that I'm doing uh, the edge highlight with. This edge highlight I'm being much, much more careful with. And then when I've done 
uh, the edges then I do cross hatching again uh, with the lighter yellow color so that it looks a bit like there's uh, more light coming from above um, like the sun or whatever so you can see that that helps it out a bit and I then I switch to uh, a wraith bone for the a very very small amount of edge highlighting. I don't go over all the edges, just some of it, just to give it a nice bright look. And I also do a tiny bit of cross hatching with the wraith bone as well, but I try not to overdo it. I don't want the panel to look white, I want it to look yellow, but just very light uh, in some places. And again, if you do mess this up, you can always go back with your contrast paints and, and try again. So now I'm doing the same for the blue. Um, I use the Terra and Turquoise to do the darker, uh, the, uh, the darker colors. And now I'm going back in, and this is a pure white. I use the uh, matte white from the uh, Army Painter here. I really like their matte white, and I think it's one of the best white colors uh, you can paint with. So, uh, and you can see I'm being much more careful with the lighter edge highlights than I was with the darker edge highlights because those I wanted to be pretty white so you can still see them uh, but the lighter ones I don't want to be too too wide I want them to be as small and, and delicate as as I can make them however I also don't want to spend you know hours and hours going back so a tiny mistake uh, if you're painting in a style like this, it won't really show. So, I mean, try, I always try to find a balance between something that works and something that looks really, really cool. And I, I think this does the trick. My main motivation for painting is always that I want to have a painted army to play with. Uh, these are not going to be for uh, painting competitions or anything like that. These are uh, gaming pieces and I want them to look cool and I want them to look bright and show up on the table, but I don't want them to... Uh, I don't want to spend 100 hours painting a mic gun. Um, and I don't want to spend hours upon hours painting old boys and stuff like that. And you can see I'm being much more careful now with the ed white edge highlights. But even if I messed it up, I would just go back with the Athematic Blue or with the Terradon Turquoise and I could just do it all over again. So this is not a painting style where you have to be really nervous that if you're going to, if you do something wrong, then you have messed up the entire thing and have to start all over and you've lost hours upon hours of work. That's not the way it is with these. Not at all. And the reason why I used the wraith bone for the yellow and the matte white for the blue is that I want the, wanted the highlights on the yellow to look a bit warmer than I want them uh, on the blue, where I want them to be really cool and stand out a lot. I won't be showing you how I paint the red, but it's exactly the same technique as with the yellow and the blue. With the red, I use um, gold contrafe, also a contrast paint for the darker. Uh, edge highlights and, and for the darker patches at the bottom of the panel and then I use um, a game color called Orange Fire for the lighter uh, highlights and then I also use just a bit of yellow to brighten it up as well. But it's the exact, exact same technique. And to make sure that the cross hatching stays as thin and nice as possible is to make sure that the paint is nice and thin. But you can experiment with it and, and do all sorts of things. So uh, this is what it looks like once uh, it's all been, some of the panels have been painted up and I paint in the exact same style all across the mech gun. It takes a bit of time, but I really like the finished results. I think it looks uh, cartoony and I think it looks fun and I think it looks very orky. It's a bit, a bit messy, but not, not too much, I think. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. 
And here you can see the finished result. The mech gun is done and it's got a nice pink crew to go with it. And I'm actually very happy with the finished results. This is only the second model I painted in this style. I painted Gaskell himself first and uh, he turned out way better than I had hoped for. So uh, I thought I would try it on another bigger model, so I chose the mech gun for it and I, uh, I really like it. So uh, I guess I am, uh, well, now I'm going to do a 2000 point orc army uh, in this style. So I hope you like it and if you want to give this style a go, then uh, please give me a heads up and I would really love to see what, uh, what you can get out of it. So I uh, hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.